Welcome to you, viewer, and thank you for joining us on Born to Lead this hour. Last time we talked about the fact that every one of us has been created to lead. Today we're going to talk about the value of leadership. Now, I think it is important to know how valuable leadership is um, so that we can position ourselves properly to provide the kind of leadership that our environment needs. Nigeria, our country at the moment, is in dire need of leadership. The world over is also in dire need of leadership. And unless you and I rise up to occupy our place as leaders, We'll continue to see the rubbish that we see across the globe. We'll continue to see the thing that we see, particularly in this part of the world, in Nigeria and in Africa um, as a la at large. So today we're going to be looking at the value of leadership, and we're going to hope that by the challenge that we will receive this hour, our hearts will be prompted to cue in, to take in our rightful places as um, leaders, particularly children of God providing leadership. So if, again, we're on the same page at this hour, I would like to begin with a word of prayer. And then I will read after that from the book of Isaiah chapter 3, um, from verse 1 to 8. And we will sieve out some lessons from that scripture. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this moment, a moment that you have provided that your word should be shared even to the hearts of men. Our hearts are open, O God, and we ask that you fill them up with the power and authority that comes through your word. I sit here only as an instrument, and I ask that you will speak to us, beginning with me and unto your people, that we will be charged to see the value, the power of leadership, and that we will make amends where necessary. Father, we bless your name because we believe you have answered, haven't asked in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Isaiah chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8. See now, the Lord Almighty, is about to take from Jerusalem and Judah both supply and support. All supplies of food and all supplies of water. The hero and the warrior, the judge and the prophet, the diviner and the elder, the captain of 50 and the man of rank, the counselor, skilled craftsman, Clever enchanter. I will make mere youths their officials. Children will rule over them. People will oppress each other, man against man, neither neighbor rather against neighbor. The young will rise up against the old, the nobody against the honored. A man will seize one of his brothers in his father's house and say, You have a cloak. You be our leader. Take charge of this heap of ruins. But in that day, he will cry out, I have no remedy. I have no food or clothing in my house. Do not make me the leader of the people. Jerusalem staggers. Judah is falling. Their words and deeds are against the Lord, defying his glorious presence. May the Lord bless our hearts with the reading of these words and transform us even as we listen to the breakdown of these words in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, from the words that we read, we hear God 
making a proclamation against his own people. Again, if you're a conversant student of the Bible, you realize that the book of Isaiah was written when the kings, several kings in, in Israel were misbehaving and were turning the people's heart and mind and back against God. They turned the people's face away from God. Again, it was a period of checkered history where one king came, did what was good, God showed mercy, and as soon as that king died, another king took over and even reversed all the progress that the other king had made to the extent that God got fed up after over 500 years of constant misbehavior and God made a declaration intending to punish these people and intending to get them to come back to their senses like the prodigal son did and intending that they move forward and progress as a nation that he had created them or formed them um, to be. Now, because God understands the value of leadership and what happens in the absence of leadership, he decided to punish them by simply taking away good leaders from them. We're told, he will stop the supply of food. He will stop the supply of water. He will take away from them warriors. He will take away from them counselors. He will take away from them experienced men and women and will in turn make children their leaders. Now the counselors, the experienced men and women, the judges were people who were leaders in that society, in that environment. They were people who provided guidance. They, they were people, excuse me, who had great influence. These were people who once they spoke, they spoke from the perspective of, of understanding God's will. And when they told the people, Whatever they said to the people turned out to be right. And here we have God declaring that he was going to take away from them all of those who were experienced and was going to allow children to lead them. Now you would understand that when God was talking about allowing the youth, the children to lead these people, he wasn't necessarily talking about age. But in addition to age, he was talking about experience in leadership. Again, just for clarity, age does not provide leadership. We've had in this part of the world where we're told that the words of old people are words of wisdom. But I remind us quickly that even the foolish grow old. So the foolish, the word of the foolish who is old cannot provide wisdom for anybody. Drunkards get old. How will a drunkard advise the child of God? And you will consider that that will be wisdom. And we know so well that even thieves grow old. And do you know that the words of thieves cannot be words of counsel? So when God was talking about removing from them judges, warriors, people of experience, and replacing them with youth, he was not just talking about age. He was talking about people who do not have experience to sit at the saddle of leadership. Again, if you look at our nation and if you look at other nations around the world. Now, let me even move away from Nigeria and go to countries, just neighboring countries as Cameroon, as Chad, who have had leaders who have sat on the throne for as old as 30 years. These men have continued to wreak havoc in their nations. You cannot say that those men are not experienced in terms of age. They are experienced in terms of age, but they are not skilled in terms of leadership. They are not experienced in terms of leadership. So God 
intended to remove from the people leaders, men and women who will listen to God and usher out God's utterance to the people. Everywhere you go to, that you find that life is in confusion and chaos. Look at the leadership. You know that the life of the leader is also in confusion and chaos. So God punished these people by taking away leaders from them because he knew that just by plugging out leaders from them, they were going to live in ruins. And if you know the history of Israel as a den, you will know that these people went into ruins. What are some of the things that we find where leadership and experience are lacking? From the scripture that we've read, the following things are found where leadership is lacking, where experience is lacking, where sincerity and honesty is lacking because these are qualities of true and genuine Leaders, men and women who have developed themselves to express leadership wherever they find themselves. The first is that hunger steps in. Why? Because resources are misused. Nigeria is a blessed nation. From the north to the south, east to the west, dig any soil in this country you will discover one form of mineral resource or the other. Yet, hunger abounds in this land that God has graciously given to us. We have abundant land sufficient to feed every household in this nation. But because of the absence of leadership, hunger abounds, poverty abounds, why? Because leadership is lacking. So where leadership is lacking, hunger is the order of the day. Just like we see in verse 2 and 3 of the scripture where we read, God said he would take away water from them. He would take away food from them. He wasn't going to starve them. He wasn't going to remove the food from them. He was just going to place leaders who will misuse the resources that he had given to them. And that would be enough to provide and create hunger. Number two, where leadership is lacking, oppression and marginalization reign. People are harassed. People are helpless. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 36, where Jesus was speaking, or at least the Bible was speaking, that Jesus looked at the people they were famished, they were harassed, they were helpless like sheep without a shepherd. In other words, they were harassed and helpless because they were people without a leader. So everywhere that leadership is lacking, oppression and marginalization is the order of the day. I'm sure you know that every group in Nigeria feels oppressed Every group in Nigeria feel marginalized. And I'm not just talking about ethnic groups. Because, by the way, it's a shame to be talking about ethnicity at this time. It is a shame to be categorizing yourself under ethnic groups. But, by the way, every group in this nation feel oppressed. Is it medical doctors? Is it lawyers? Is it the court workers? Is it nurses? Even the politicians feel very oppressed. Why? Because leadership is lacking. So everywhere that leadership is lacking, oppression and marginalization is the order of the day. The next, we see in verse 5 of same Isaiah where we read that disrespect became common amongst the people. The younger ones no longer regarded the older ones. As Christians, we know that Scripture has instructed the older ones to be mentors to the younger ones. Older husbands to teach younger husbands. Older wives to teach younger wives. 
Yet, where leadership is lacking, disrespect is common. It is the order of the day to the extent that the younger ones no longer show regard for the older ones. And again, you can look at our society at the moment. Everywhere you turn to, and I'm using this nation as an example. I know that this is supposed to be an international broadcast, but I'm using my nation as an example. That everywhere you turn, to the left, to the right, there is huge disrespect. Younger ones go on the streets to insult older ones. We write in newspapers, we speak on the TV, we disregard parental guidance. Children walk away on their parents. In fact, just a few days ago, I think about two days ago, a report was given of a young lady who locked her mother in the room and beat up her mother. Why? Over nothing, but just over the inheritance that their father left for them. In a sane society, in a society where leadership is provided, respect is the order of the day. But in a society where leadership is lacking, disrespect becomes the order of the day. The next is the fact that mediocrity prevails. Standards drop. We no longer pursue excellence where leadership is lacking. People take work for granted. Levity comes into work. In today's civil service in Nigeria, it is no longer amazing that people, civil servants, go to work as late as 10 a.m. when they should have been in the office at 8 a.m. In fact, a story was told to me in my station where I'm based of a man who has devised a strategy, a civil servant. He comes to work with two caps and uh, some bunch of keys. And as soon as he settles down on his seat, he drops a cap, drops a bunch of key, and gets up and goes for other business. So that when you come, you would expect that he, he came to office. So you will see his cap and key and expect that he didn't go far, that he's around and that he's coming. But of course, the day's job will be closed and you won't see him in the office. Why? Because leadership is lacking. Leadership is lacking. Even in our own equa, it is no longer surprising to see even pastors take their tax and responsibility for granted. It is no longer lacking to see ushers in the church who are supposed to be guiding and directing people come later than the people had arrived to church. It is no longer a surprise. It is, in fact, no longer a surprise that volunteers in churches now hope to be paid for having volunteered. That's a shame. And again, it is an expression of the lack of leadership. People abdicate from duty where there is no leadership. Only yesterday, I was sharing a story of someone, or well, someone was sharing a story with me of someone who was engaged in an organization and that the person consistently came late to the organization. And when he was told about that attitude, he simply told them that his family was priority for him and that unless he had finished his family assignment, he would not come to work early. Of course, your family ought to be your priority. But in prioritizing your family, there must be a way where you can properly organize yourself to be at work very early without abdicating from your parental assignment. Where leadership is lacking, people abdicate from their work. People no longer see work as necessary. And you see, these are the same people who will march 
with labor groups for the cry of increase of salary. Meanwhile, they will not be found at their places of work. Today, when you go to public hospitals, you no longer see doctors in their place of duty. Rather, they have left their place of duty. They are attending to other things that do not involve them. Or they create private hospitals. And when you, they should be in public hospitals and patients have lined up, you do not see them. People simply refer you back to these private hospitals where these doctors who are receiving salary as both public servants and private servants are, gaining, are, are, are abstaining from their places of work. Again, for me, that breaks my heart. In our universities today, of course, when I was in the university, we had a lecturer who will not come to work from the beginning of the semester and somewhere towards the tail end of the minister, uh, of the, sorry, towards the tail end of the semester, he sets up special days, including weekends and Sundays, and bombards you with all sorts of lectures and teachings. In fact, most of us ended up getting confused. Why? He abdicated from his place of work and came and troubled us as students, trying to break our backs. Where leadership is lacking, confidence drops. Verse 7 tells us that people were now shopping for leaders. They were now running around round and begging people because you were well-dressed. They say, come and lead us. And people said, no, I cannot lead. I am not well-fed. I do not have food to give to you. Why? Because they lacked confidence. They lacked confidence of leadership. Many years ago, it happened in Argentina. There was a period in Argentina where within, I think within three or four months, they had more than four presidents. Because everyone who entered office saw the wealth or the depth of responsibility. They checked out of office quickly. Again, where leadership is absent, confidence drops. And I'll round up by saying that where leadership is lacking, evil is the order of the day. Nigeria expresses that. Today it is no longer safe for you to travel. I traveled all the way to Jos. But today it is no longer safe for you to be on the road. You are constantly afraid. Only this morning, someone I had contacted came to my hotel room to say that, well, um, he didn't sleep last night because the boys and the men in their environment had to keep vigil because they wanted to secure their environment. They had a sense that they were going to be attacked. And so they kept vigil through the night wanting to protect themselves. Evil is the order of the day. Just last week, two young men in Benue State were captured by the police and were taken to the bush so they would go and show where they had buried people that they had killed. And those two young men killed their own wives and buried them in shallow graves. Why? Because where leadership is lacking, evil is the order of the day. Evil take preeminence. Friends, again, I quoted last time and let me quote again. John Maxwell says, everything rises and falls on leadership. And my assessment is that when you go to an environment and you see that nothing is working properly, do not blame it on anyone. Just know that leadership is lacking. I will challenge you. You may be a church member. You may be the DCC chairman secretary. You may be an executive in one organization or the other. You are a police officer, a military man. Let me ask you, is your environment free of these vices? 
Is your environment secured from these vices? If you see these vices wherever you find yourself, note that you are not providing leadership and that leadership is lacking. So before you are quick to point a finger at someone else, let me ask you, when you go before the traffic lights and it shows red, what happens? Ask yourself this question and ask yourself if you have been providing leadership. May the Lord bless us even as we round up with a word of prayer. Thank you, Eternal Father, for this moment. I ask that these words will prick our hearts continually until we do a change to lead as we ought to lead. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we pray. Amen. Amen.